want to know my story. So I started in 1980 uh, with my own business after being let go at uh, a uh, restoration shop. I worked there for about a year, learning the business, learning the trade. It was a small two-man shop. Two weeks later, I opened my first business, which was M&L Automotive. From there, I was doing high-end restorational work. In that time period, I learned a lot, right up to the point now where uh, I'm pretty much a coach builder. <laughs> hey, thanks for coming, and let me show you guys around. So, this is our studio. This is what I do now is teach. Been doing that since 2014 and we've got a lot of interesting uh, students that come through and a lot of people that want to just stop in, say hi. Right now it's a Sunday so no one's here. Wonderful uh, slitter, this Bailey piece here. Works great for us, slip roll. You'll find that Bailey is everything here. Um, mag brakes, small one, big one. Up here, we have uh, the Predator back end. This is uh, an American supercar that we were doing. We built the prototype out of fiberglass. This was to be the aluminum version of it, but we never got to the point where it's completely done. It never got born with a, uh, a heart. Early 2000, I got a call from one of the salespeople at Bailey, Shane, he asked about doing some metal shaping classes, you know, showing people on the equipment at their facility. We would show them how to do metal shaping with the wheel and the power hammer. And since I guess I was, you know, the guy on the power hammer, that's what I always gravitated towards. It was a great opportunity for me to talk about uh, what we were doing and how I got to this point. It was a great way to promote the equipment. These are body panels off of a 427 Cobra. We took these off because uh, this is actually a wide body comp 427, which there was only like, I think seven of. It wasn't proper for the car that we were doing. And you could look at the car we're doing and go, I don't see the difference, but there are differences for people that really do know these cars. This is a Ferrari Restomod. It stays a Ferrari. It uses the drivetrain from a 550 Marinello, which is about a 95 to 2003, I think. It's V12, four cam motor, and transaxle and torque tube, modified. And that is going into this uh, 275 Nart Spider. And there were only a few of those cars. The company that gave me this project to do, they're in charge of you know, the drive line, the suspension, making the car work. This, what you see here, is what I do, what I've always done with Ferraris. I know the cars, I know what they're supposed to be, what they're supposed to look like. Through research and measurements, I know how Ferrari built cars of this era. My job is to make it hold the body and doors, hood and deck lid slamming and shutting and uh, possibly the bright work, uh, we'll have to see. This is off of one of the Shelby Cobra 427 cars that I use as a shaping buck. It's a fiberglass. So they made some fiberglass cars and aluminum cars. So this came off of one of those. I've used it a couple of times now to build some body panels. Uh, one of the cars you're gonna see in a few minutes also built using that body panel. We have a couple of bead rollers here. These are fantastic, man. These things up, down, you can flip it one side to the other. It has a huge throat depth, tooling up the wazoo. Anything you can think of, you can make. This is the tail for that Nart Spider that was onto that chassis. We've got the uh, shrinker stretcher. Now there's a kick shrinker and there's a power shrinker. When Chris was making these from RMD, he just dropped this off one day. It's been here ever since. <laughs> The back of the uh, building, this is a original 427 Cobra. We just finished building the body for it and then it went to paint. It's back now because the gear ratio in it uh, was a bit too high. We're now at a going to go to a, a 308 gear so that we spin a few less RPMs at highway speed. It's about a year uh, to build one complete. Yes, it is. This is, a, this is a lovable table, you know, and it has tooling on the other side and a notcher. The every shop has kind of, you know, the token uh, mill and lathe. And this is the tube bender. 
Yeah, we'll, using the tube bender a lot. Yeah, quite a bit when we're, we're laying out chassis work. Um, you'd be surprised how many pieces look the, like they're straight, but they get bends. So in 2014, um, I thought, you know, I, I've got to pass this on to other people. I wanted to make sure that before I wasn't able to do metal shaping any longer, uh, I would be able to pass on to the, to the next generation kind of the, the tips and tricks and secrets of metal shaping to take some of that mystery out of it. And that was exactly, you know, what Shane's thought was on the whole thing as well. Um, you know, let's, let's show these people that it, it is easily obtainable. Now we're truly into the Bailey world right here. We have all of the hammers and two large uh, English wheels, they're 37 inch throat depth. You can put a student on each one. I happen to have the rubber wheel in the top of this one. That's a vulcanized wheel. And then we have this one set up for steel. We can switch them back and forth. When I started, nobody wanted to teach me anything in this country. They always put on the facade that they were building them, but I, I later found they weren't making them. They were coming out of England. So I thought, I'm gonna go to England. So I went to England and I met someone there that showed me the way, uh, Lawrence Kett. He was one of Brian Inglis' top men. Boy, I'll tell you, that guy has his own shop and does the most amazing work uh, on Cobras and, and Ferraris. Uh, so he, he taught me a tremendous amount. I brought one home with me, well, second time I went there, I, I was hunting an English wheel and I found a place that sold me an Edwards wheel, 42 inch throat depth, you know, and I had that for a number of years. This is the, or was the bread and butter machine. Um, it still is a pretty fascinating machine. It's an MH19. This one can be set to run off of its spring like a normal power hammer, or it can go into a lock mode. So it works like a Polmax machine. It's more of a reciprocating machine. This is the 28, another machine that I had something to do with, uh, working with Chris Roosh from RMD, uh, the maker, designer of all these machines. You know, I had input on it. I had input on a lot of the machines. When we did these machines, um, parts broke. You know, uh, when the prototype was built, that prototype was dropped off. When it was, you know, all fresh and everything and had a different type of spring pack and design in it and I kept snapping those leaf springs out of it. He decided to go to a completely different type of system and that worked great. We weren't breaking those parts anymore. And there were some small pieces that needed a tune up, but before those went to production, all that stuff was worked out. But I'm glad and I'm happy to be a, a part of it. But the 37 is the killer machine. This thing will chew up metal like it'll shape two, three, four, five, whatever you can hang on to and weld together and run through, it'll do it. It is like the Godzilla of power hammers. Chris worked for me part-time. He asked if he could take measurements off the Yoder and you know, kind of see how it worked because he was interested in making a machine. It turned out being the 19. It was many years later, I finally talked him into making the big machine. He asked me what I wanted on it, what it should be. So I said, it should be at the height, you know, of the Yoder. It's got a quick change tooling and it has to kill just about anything you put in it. The first time I ran this machine, there was no paint on it. It was at Chris's factory. I put the first piece in it and pop, pop, it, it snapped back like this and smacked me right in the mouth. And I thought, wow, so that's the way we're gonna play. <laughs> and ever since then, you know, I've, I've tamed it and uh, it listens to me now and it does what I want it to do. And then there's a little uh, tool caddy here with assortment of dies that come with that machine. And 
This is our 28 pneumatic hammer. It works on the same principle as the uh, air punishers, but with a hell of a bit, lot bigger motor in it and it's got a thump to hit uh, a panel. And it's operated by a foot control and is adjustable like the uh, 27. You can use the tooling in it the same as you would in, the, in either the 19 or the 27. Last but not least, yes. These are a pair of uh, air plenishers. This was another brainy idea that I had that Chris went ahead and made. Um, we have a stock and it had four of these on it. The idea was to have them set up so that they would basically do different things. These are the arms that we use on the uh, production machines. I kind of gussied it up a little bit here and bent lines um, for it so it's got uh, hard lines. If you look back at the way I learned, you know, and nobody was teaching anything and everybody was really covenant of their, of their little tricks and things, Bailey just blew the doors off of it. And if you wanted to learn metal shaping, uh, that was definitely, they were definitely the people. And they have sent a number of uh, people my way as students. Um, but, you know, those starting classes that Shane was doing, and Chris and I, and that was, you know, that was, that was the, the nucleus of the whole thing popping. And now you got, you've got everybody doing metal shaping of some sort, which I love. I, I think more people should be doing it. And it doesn't have to just be automotive. It really can be any art form you want to make it and using our equipment to, to do it. I'm glad to be a part of it. Um, Bailey has a huge presence in that. And I, uh, I believe that if you want to learn something, uh, you dial into Bailey and uh, you're going to know which way to turn.